but I didn't, I didn't react well. And, um, I really regret that. That's like, there's a lot of regrets that I have. That's one of them that I left that I had to listen to what she just said. Cause I know it hurt her. Hey loves it's Ro. Today we're back with another video with Michael and Carol Santos. This is my favorite one, hands down. My favorite of all of the videos that they've sent me so far. They get really vulnerable and deep. I actually cried while I was watching this. Today we're talking all about intimacy, being touched for the first time after so many years, and they go really deep and they expose some really, really vulnerable things that happen between the two of them and surrounding intimacy in their relationship before and after he was released. So I ask you to leave them some love, be very kind to them in the comments, and without wasting any more time, wait, I'm wasting one more time for one second. I'm wearing my Adam necklace today because I don't wanna take it off. This is the third or the fourth video that I filmed today and I'm wearing it in every one because it goes with everything and I'm obsessed with it. I will always link where you can get it with a discount code for you guys in the description box below because everybody needs their name or I think their loved one's name on a necklace. You might find it cheesy, but you know what? Cheesy works when your loved one's incarcerated. So without wasting any more time now for real, here are Michael and Carol with their intimacy video. The next category is intimacy. How long did it take until you became comfortable with your loved one touching you? You go ahead and answer that first. <laughs> um, well, for me, <laughs> it took about uh, 30 seconds. I couldn't wait to be touching my wife or for her to be touching me. I'm very affectionate with her. And I mean, it's probably like overboard on my part because, I mean, I lived so long without, you know, physical intimacy that I couldn't wait to touch it. And, 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 and for me, we used to say we would always be touching, but I think I took that a lot more literally than her because <laughs> I'm always touching her. And I was very comfortable from day one and I am still very comfortable and actually very needy of being affectionate. I, I, for me, that's just something that has happened as a result of me being probably I don't know, maybe that's just who I am, but certainly being in part incarcerated for 25 years really made me long for my wife and touching. And I still feel it, even though I've been home for six and a half years. So I was comfortable from day one because I hadn't been able to touch like this. And I wanted to for, for 9,500 days that I was a prisoner. I felt comfortable right away. I was very happy that we had the freedom and the liberty to... Um, be have intimacy um, that was private and and it was really nice to be touched and I was alone for 10 years you know waiting for Michael to come home and so I I liked it a lot um, and I I feel still feel comfortable with him touching me <laughs> okay. so he's very <laughs> okay. he's <laughs> He's very affectionate um, to, you know, I mean, it's just even always wanting to touch me. But that is something that we, we said all the time that we would always be touching. Um, and he takes that literally. He always wants to touch me. And that makes me happy. The next one. <laughs> the next question uh, is, did you have insecurities about being touched after so long? Well, we just kind of answered that. Um, but the the person goes on to say, as women, we get in our heads about aging, bodies changing, him not seeing a woman naked since he was young. And how did you handle the insecurities about being intimate with somebody you were married to for 10 years for the first time after a decade of being together? Um, so, yes, that I, was, I, w I was 49, and at that time... I felt like I was in the best shape of my life. I had been, part of what I did um, during my time when I wasn't visiting is go to the gym. And I was really lucky. I lived very close to the prison. And the gym and my the hospital where I worked and my house were within about a three mile radius. So I was always at the gym and I, I worked out regularly and I was in really good shape, the best shape of my life. So I felt, really confident 
But it was interesting the first time we were alone and got naked together. I I felt great until I saw his face and. He... That's not right. I'm sorry. Well, you're right. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can say it. I'll tell it. You're right. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll explain. I was really excited about getting naked with him for the first time because I felt really good about myself. But I could see that he didn't see me the way I saw myself. And it really hurt me. Um, and it was it, it really hurt me. I was embarrassed and um, felt very insecure and and had a you know pretty good cry session about it. And we had to really talk about it because I had a perception of myself that was really different than what he experienced. And so that was tough. That first time we were naked together was, was, um, it was hard because it wasn't. I think you're right. I think you're right. It was hard. And, you know, I failed Carol in a lot of ways and that was certainly one of them. And that was certainly one that I'll always feel awful about. And, I don't, I did, there are involuntary things about being in prison for 26 years. Um, I was 23 years old when I was arrested and the only women I saw my whole life were super fit 22 year olds. Okay. And so I didn't know what a 49 year old woman, the beauty of a 49 year old woman, I, I didn't know. And, and, and I was in love with Carol, but she saw something in my face that I certainly did not mean to project. And now, you know, to, she's the she's the only woman for me, and the only eyes I have are for her, and have always been since I've been home. But I didn't I didn't react well, and um, I really regret that. That's like there's a lot of regrets that I have. That's one of them that I left that I had to listen to what she just said because I know it hurt her. And I love her. Um, but as I've told her then, it was really hard for me to be in prison for 26 years. I had no idea about anything. I, I, I didn't know my own body. I, I didn't know anything. And, and, and I'm really sorry. But, but, and I hope that, that none of you, that I hope that your men are not like I was when I came home, I've worked every day to try and make up for that. And I hope that I have, but I do, I'm very sad to, to hear my wife say that I caused her insecurity. I do remember that she thought that I would leave her. And I, and I remember holding her and telling her, I'll never leave you. And I'll always work hard to show you you're the center of my world. But it was, a, that is something that I experienced that I did not expect to experience. And I certainly didn't expect it to show on my face. I don't even know what you saw on my face, but I'm really sad that I hurt you. And I still am. And I'll say it in public. <laughs> so. Well, and I think it's, I think for every woman, that's a natural feeling when, you know, you're, you haven't been intimate with somebody either for never or it's been a long time because of, separation from prison so that is a very natural um, concern and and something that um, you know I certainly experienced and um, you know we got through it and and you know we can kind of laugh about it now I don't laugh but... <laughs> I, it hurts me to think that I did that to you but 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 I I I, I can recognize and acknowledge that, that 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 was something I did and I'm can own it and can try and make it better. And that's what I've done. Yeah. Yeah. He's good at that. So, so there's another one. On the next okay. Question. The next question, was there any infidelity in the marriage? And if so, how did you move past it? And that's a really quick, short answer. The answer is no, there is no infidelity. We talked about trust and I trust Michael hundred percent and he trusts me. And that's never been an issue in our marriage or our relationship. You want to say anything? 
No, no, there's been no infidelity and, and there never will be. I've always told Carol that I'll always love her and cherish her and be faithful to her and work hard to build a stronger marriage. So that's how I feel. There's, there's, um, I'll read the next question. Were you nervous about marrying someone you had never been intimate with? And did you fear you wouldn't be compatible sexually after so many years of marriage without sex? Well, as I just said in the previous question, um, I, there's a lot you don't know. You don't know what you don't know when you do as much time in prison as I did. I mean, 25 years before I went to a halfway house, it was 9,135 days. Ask me how I know. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's a lot you don't even know about yourself when you've been away that long. I mean, I was in prison longer than I had been alive, uh, outside of prison, I should say. I, I was in prison longer than I'd been outside of prison. And when you think about that in perspective, you know, you live at home until you're 18. And then five years later, I was locked up and I was locked up for five times that length, 25 years. So as a kid, you know, I was a kid and promiscuous and doing crazy things when I was 21. So it was different. Um, I looked at Carol and fell in love with Carol and built a relationship. I should say only fell in love, but built love by being determined and committed and focused on what we would build together from prison and then come home. Um, so sex was something I looked forward to, but I think it may be different for me in the sense that I had been away for so long that my recollection was what sex was like when you're 21. And um, I had to realize after I got home that, that the world evolved and it moved on without you. And I was grateful to experience that with Carol. And as I said before, you know, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, show her how much I appreciated her because I did. And I, I loved her and needed her. And I still do. Um, so that was were you nervous. I wasn't definitely not nervous about getting married. Did you fear you wouldn't be compatible sexually? No, I didn't have any fears about any of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know about you. I was not nervous about marrying Michael at all. In fact, sex was not even part of the conversation you know when we were getting to know each other again i i was not interested in a physical relationship i was interested in knowing somebody and and having a different kind of intimacy and that's why going 10 years um, without being able to have physical intimacy was not something that ever troubled me. Um, I, like you, I looked forward to it. I didn't ever worry that we wouldn't be compatible sexually because we had really good communication. Um, it just was not a part of our relationship. I mean, we knew it would happen at some point and it was just sort of out there in the future waiting for us. So I definitely wasn't nervous about marrying him. Um, I've known him since we were five. We grew up together. Um, Not five. I mean, fifth grade. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> fifth grade, um, eight or nine. And um, so we had a, a different, you know, we have a long history. We, we had the same childhood. So there's a, a different kind of intimacy that comes from that and then the way we built our relationship. Um, but, yeah, sex was not something that was a, a a driving need or a hot topic in our, you know, in I our. I kept trying to years. get her in the visiting room, but it never worked out. <laughs> yeah, I was. There's no way I was going to risk losing our visits uh, to try to sneak into a closet or out on the patio or something. I know other people do that, but I, it for, was different. We were older. Yeah, we well, were it was older. just not something that was was important enough to risk losing our visits or extending his prison time or a new charge or something like that. It was no. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's different. When, I mean, the reality is I'd been in jail for 16 years was obviously really interested in having sex with my wife, but I, I, and looked forward to it incredibly and didn't have any concerns of that. We would be incompatible, but, we're older, you know, and um, it was just much more important for me to have her love and her companionship 
and plan for the future and work to try and help her solve problems and work to try and make her life better. That was always been that's what drove me. Kind of intimacy. Yeah. So that's my answer to those questions. And mine. And her answer to our questions on intimacy. They are the best. I sobbed because what happened to Carol is one of my biggest fears. This actually was a conversation, like a fire starter type of thing between me and Adam because we had a long conversation around this and I exposed my fears and I got real vulnerable with him for if and when he's, if, if, no, not if, when, for when he's awarded his release and he comes home and we're intimate for the first time and I'm in my 40s now, you know? So, and I have those same reservations. So if you're interested in other videos in this series, I will pop the playlist that Michael and Carol are doing with us there. And if you're not already subscribed, please do that by clicking that little circle there or the red box below. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.